Well, good afternoon, everybody, and wishing you a very warm welcome to this SOAS concert series and postgraduate diploma in Asian art collaboration concert. Um, I'm Georgie Pope, and I have the pleasure of running the SOAS concert series, which means working with musicians from all around the world, working in different genres to create concerts um, that in Normal times would have been performed live on the Brunei Gallery Lecture Theatre stage. Um, and then during the pandemic, we've managed to get this um, filmed and live streamed across the world. Um, in the coming months, as the pandemic hopefully eases, we're going to be having some live audiences in the BGLT, the Brunei Gallery Lecture Theatre. But we do hope that you'll still stay with us wherever you are in the world, because we're going to be live streaming our concerts from the BGLT. So um, this evening, uh, this afternoon, we are, rather than asking for any tickets or donations to the concert series, we're asking for you to make donations to the Coronavirus Appeal, um, which is being run by the Disasters Emergency Committee, the DEC, um, to support their amazing work, which um, continues in one of the, the worst hit countries by the pandemic in India. And it continues to be a serious situation there. So we do help um, hope that you will um, generously donate. And thanks for your donations so far. It's been remarkable, the response. So um, today, the way it's going to work is that after I finish speaking, I'm going to hand over to the doctoral researcher, Kirit Singh, who is at SOAS University of London, and who's also a musician and um, has a broad and amazing knowledge about the um, music genres that Mehbubji um, will be exploring and performing this afternoon. Um, Mehbub himself has unfortunately had a um, family emergency and has had to fly to India um, and is there right now. So he won't be able to join us afterwards for a Q&A um, in person. But um, Kirat Singh has stepped in and kindly um, offered to field questions and talk a bit about the music that we're going to be hearing. So yeah, without further ado, I think I'll hand over to Kirit Singh, please, to introduce the concert. Thank you. Thanks, Georgie. Um, I'd just like to say it's a, a real honour and privilege to um, introduce uh, Mehbub Nadim, who um, I feel we're very lucky to have such a a wonderful and um, talented and illustrious uh, musician representing the Agra Karana of uh, Hindustani music here in the UK. So I've had the pleasure and privilege to know Ustad Mahabub Nadim Saab for several years. He's been a uh, regular uh, contributor in the SOAS summer school and regularly gives workshops on uh, Hindustani music there. So. Uh, yeah, Ustad Mehboob Nadim Saab is uh, born into a very illustrious family. Uh, he represents the Agra Gharana, and he's the grandson of a very famous uh, Hindustani vocalist, Ustad Vilayat Hussain Khan Saab, uh, who anyone who's interested in Hindustani music will know that he's authored uh, a famous book, Hamari Sangeet Ratan, uh, documenting his, his life in music. and. His other, uh, one of his other grandfathers was Ustad Azmat Hussain Khan Saab. Um, and both of these names are um, very well known in the circles of Hindustani music, very well established uh, composers and, and vocalists in their own right. Mehbub Nadim Saab himself uh, was trained initially by his father, Ustad Yaqub Hussain. Uh, and then studied sitar with one of his uncles, uh, Ustad Rafat Khan. And he has gone on to uh, continue his training under the uh, sitar maestro Pandit Arvind Parikh. We'll, we have the privilege of listening to him today. And um, I'm just going to introduce briefly the, um, the set which Mabu um, will be playing, sharing with us today. Um, I, I'd like to say also, I'm, I'm sure we'll all uh, send our prayers and thoughts to uh, Mehbub on uh, with his family emergency. We hope that everything uh, 
as well. So um, the set which Mabub will be sharing with us today is um, a very devotionally oriented set. We have uh, five pieces which we'll be sharing. First is um, the first few pieces are bhajans, so devotional texts rendered in a uh, classical style, so heavily influenced by rag, uh, the rag music tradition. Um, so the first one is in set to rag Ahir Bharup, which is a, a morning rag, and this has been arranged uh, by Mehbub Nadim himself. The second piece is a Kabir bhajan, um, and this is a composition by Pandit Dinkar Kaikani, who is also a very uh, well-known vocalist, the father of uh, Pandit Yogesh Samsi, who many of you may know is the famous tabla maestro of our times. So this is a Kabir bhajan composed by Pandit Dinkar Kaikani. Uh, and uh, the kind of refrain is, is Bhai Santo. You'll hear that in the second piece. The third piece is uh, a Krishna bhajan composed by Ustad Aslam Hussein Khan, who is um, one of Mehbub Nadim's uncles. Um, again, representing the depth and breadth of, of the music tradition in these uh, uh, family, tradition, uh, family traditions of, of, uh, of the Agra Gharana. Then the fourth piece um, is a, another Kabir bhajan, which is actually um, the musical arrangement is uh, a well-known arrangement uh, belonging to Abida Parveen, famous Sufi uh, vocalist from Pakistan. And the bhajan is Manalago Miru Yar Fakiri Man. Then the fifth piece um, is a Sufi song by Amir Khusro. Uh, again, um, representing a devotional tradition, but from, from the Sufi perspective. Um, and the, 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 the song text is Mohe Apane Hi Rang Me Rang De Nizam. Finally, um, Mehbub Nadim Sahib will be sharing a, a composition of his grandfather, Ustad Azmat Hussain Khan Sahib, who I mentioned was a very famous vocalist, um, also known as Dilrang. And you'll hear the name Dilrang will come towards the end of the composition, something to listen out for. Um, and the text is Tu Hi Tu Hai. So again, it's a, a, a devotional text, also composed in Rag Ahil Bhairav, which is uh, morning rag. So kind of finishing where we started off uh, with the first vision also in Raga Hir Bhairav. So it's, uh, I don't want to delay proceedings any more than we need to. It's going to be a very uh, wonderful set, um, very devotional. I encourage you to kind of try to tap into that devotional mood, um, which Mabul Nadeem Sahib will, will, will be uh, opening up through his music with us. Um, and then, without further ado, I'll hand over to Patrick, who will start the live stream. I hope you all enjoy the concept. Adab, Namaskar, and good afternoon, friends. I greet you all uh, for this fantastic uh, afternoon's concert. I just like to thank the SOAS and Georgia to organize this concert. I will be performing few Kabir songs, one of my composition, one of uh, Sufi song of Hazrat Amir Khusro, and couple of bhajans. So the first bhajan I'm singing is composed and written by myself and it's in Rag Ahir Bhairav. Thank you. Re
प्रभु कौन 
तुम बेन कौन तुम बेन कौन हम The second bhajan I'm going to perform is of Kabir. The composition of this bhajan is composed by Pandit Dinkar ji, Pandit Dinkar Kaikni ji. Hmm. Bhai Santo. संतो भाई संतो भाई संतो ऐसा धुंध अंधियारा ऐसा संतो भाई संतो भीतर बाग बगीचा इस घट भीतर बाग बगीचा इसी में सिर जान हारा हारा इसी में सिर जान भीतर हीरा मोती इस घट भीतर हीरा मोती इसी में पर खान हारा हारा इसी में पर खान
कहे कबीर सुनो भाई साधो कहे कबीर सुनो भाई साधो इसी third bhajan i am performing is composed and written by my uncle late uncle ustad aslam khan sahab this bhajan is uh, in the praise of lord krishna rang rangi सिया रंग रंगीला छबीला रूप कर सिया सबके मन में छुप कर सबके मन में छुप कर बैठा कई है उसके
next song i'm going to sing is by kabir and it's a very famous uh, bhajan i'm going to perform 
re na
the last uh, sufi song i'm going to perform and this is composed by hazrat amir khusru khusru rain suha Rangadeni jamu hai 
I will be performing Rag Ahir Bhairav, a composition, a bandish of my grandfather, Ustad Azmat Hussain Khan Sahib, and then one another composition which I have composed. Uh, so I'll just do a short alap and two bandishes. Thank you. 
अरब को पहचान अरे नादान रब को पहचान अरे नादान वो ही तेरो राम वो ही रह मान रब को पहचान अरे नादान रब को पहचान अरे नादान रब को पहचान साची लगन रख दिल रंग बासो साची लगन रख दिल रंग बासो मत कर तू चंचल ध्यान अरे नादान रब को पहचान अरे नादान रब को पहचान
तू ये तू है ए मेरे मौला कर दे सब पे करम है मेरे मौला कर दे सब पे करम तू ही तू है तू ही तू है तू ही तू है तू ही तू है सब में तू ही तू है है मेरे मौला कर दे सब पे करम Well, what a terrific and stunning performance from Mehbub Ji and also his colleagues Hanif Khan on the tabla and Sunil Jadov on the harmonium, um, who just put together a stunning concert. Um, he is a very talented and also such a flexible musician, somebody who can sing in so many different styles and also play sitar so beautifully. Um, and I'm, I'm deeply grateful also to, to um, Mehbub for you know, managing to come along and do this recording in SOAS on Thursday, despite the sort of many personal um, pressures going on in his life. So um, thank you. And also thank you to my colleagues um, who managed to film this and get it edited, particularly Jerry Greta and Patrick getting it all prepared in time for streaming today. Um, so now we've got so many interesting questions coming in from different places. Um, do add them to the Q and A. Um, just had a lovely comment there from Sue Miller. Thank you. Um, one of the questions um, that I've just received is um, just about these um, the different interpretations of Amir Khusro songs. Um, how different Quranas or different approaches. Um, and genres and schools kind of approach these kind of this um, this genre of music. And um, could you tell us a little bit more, maybe Kirit, 
about the the Agra Karana um, and maybe how what we heard today, you know, how it sounds and how it might be different to other other schools. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm I'm not as qualified as Ustad uh, Halul Nadim himself, uh, who will be able to explain much better than I am, surely. But um, the Agra Grana is one of the oldest schools of of Khayal music, and Khayal is the kind of de facto standard Hindustani classical vocal style of today. Um, its predecessor is, is normally considered to be Drupad, which is um, a style that goes back probably several centuries before. But Khayal really um, came to flourish, at least. There's you know, various theories around the um, origins of Khayal music, but it came to flourish in the uh, late 18th century, going into the early 19th century. And um, the Agra Gharana, uh, to which uh, Mebu uh, belongs, is one of the earliest gharanas to appear. So gharana as a term arrived later in the uh, late 1800s, but um, these family traditions, you know, gharana represents a family tradition with a certain repertoire and a particular vocal style, perhaps, uh, certain characteristics which differentiate them uh, from other family traditions. So the oldest khayal uh, gharanas are Gwalior school and the Agra school. Um, Agra kind of is considered to be a branch off from the Gwalior school, but very early on, within the first two generations of the, uh, the Gwalior school being established, the Agra Garana had kind of uh, branched off. And both of these traditions are, in the manner in which they present this Khayal uh, repertoire, they're considered to be very close to the Drupad style, um, quite um, a bit more austere in their presentation. Later styles, like the Patiala style, became more ornate in the way that they ornamented um, the, the, the lyrics and with the particular vocal ornamentations. But the Agra school is, is one of the oldest. And if you hear a Kayal, I mean, what we heard today was more devotional bhajans and Amir, you know, Amir Khusro Sufi uh, oriented repertoire. But if you were to hear a, a purely classical, it would be quite common for, at least in the Agra school, to hear perhaps um, half an hour to 45 minutes of just rag alap and improvisation before even the composition comes into play. And that would be uh, an alap done with these non tom syllables, you know, these uh, abstract syllables uh, in different tempos speeding up. And this is what the Agra Garana is known for today. But obviously, we didn't really get a sense of that today because it was more devotional repertoire. So I think it's it's difficult to say that we can particularly latch onto something of the Agra Garana in today's performance because it was more of um, a repertoire which is shared between Garanas. Um, I think what the, the, the kind of glimpse that we did have is in the last item, which uh, or the penultimate item which uh, Mebuji had presented, which was a composition of his uh, grandfather Azmat Hussein Khan Sab. Um, that was Rabko um, Pehechane uh, Are Nadani, this, this uh, uh, text, Bandish, which he presented. That was a very, uh, mm -hmm. very much a, uh, rep representing the Agra school, at least in the style of composition. Um, but the way, the way it was inserted, I suppose, is, is quite innovative because I don't know whether that's a normal thing to have a Bandish and then a sung section and a sitar section. This seems like a sort of innovation of Mevubs himself. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. It, it, it's representative of his versatility, like you were saying, you know, his, because uh, he's such a talented and, and gifted sitar player and uh, coming from a very rich vocal tradition in his family. Um, it's, it's beautiful the way that he can, uh, you know, combine these two elements and, and kind of slip in and out of between one and the other. Um, yes. But that's, that's certainly more of an, in, yeah, an, an innovative. Uh, aspect of, of what we heard today. Mm -hmm. And then um, another question that's um, come into my inbox is also about um, about Kabir mm -hmm. and about the sort of persisting popularity of Kabir over, you know, across across genres, also across borders, across generations. I mean, 
we, we see there Mehbub's interpretation of something which he gives reference to Abi the Parveen. And you know, these are sort of multi-led um, interactions with, with Kabir Bhajans. Can you sort of talk a little bit about that maybe? Yeah, I, I think this is, this uh, also links to, I, I didn't answer the second part of the first question around Amir Khusro and, and the stylistic differences of Amir Khusro in different schools as well. But I think there's some link there as well because um, if you look at where Amir Khusro is, is, is sung, that tradition has been most strongly represented in the uh, tradition of, of Qawwali, the Sufi devotional really tradition. So uh, the Qawwal Bacho uh, Gharana, which is the, the tradition of, of the children of, um, of Amir Khusro descending from that uh, tradition. Uh, oh, Bacho, I didn't know that was what they were called, literally the children of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that that's that's become a garana, and they became known also for their khayal style of singing, also. Um, but their original or, or core repertoire, perhaps you could say, is the uh, the Sufi song texts, uh, of which obviously Amir Khusro is one of the biggest contributors. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, but even their style, like I was saying, because they were known for khayal. Uh, singing later on, uh, you know, in the last, uh, the court of Bahadur Shah Zafar, the last uh, Mughal emperor, um, Ustad Tanras Khan Sahib was the, uh, one of the leading Khayal vocalists and he was belonging to the Kowal, uh, Kowal Bache school. So oh. um, their presentation of Amir Khusro songs can be very much in the classical style, very, um, all, all kind of elements which you would associate with a classical bandish performance with rag and alap and improvisation. Mm. And you could also hear from the same garana representatives of that same tradition singing in a different context, uh, you know, in the modern, if, if, you, if you see one, the classical on a, on a, on a stage in an auditorium with an audience, then yes. you might find in, a, in an informal setting in a shrine or in someone's house, in a devotional setting where that same repertoire is sung with people clapping in the Kavali style and, you know, Dorlik is playing instead of the tabla and instrumentation will be slightly different and it'll be a whole group of singers rather than a soloist uh, presenting a song text. So that, that repertoire moves between contexts and in, in between styles. And the same thing is with Kabir, you know, this is the way I see them in, in a very similar uh, light in that Kabir can be sung by the likes of, uh, Prelad Singh Tipanya, who's a folk singer, you know, and very well known. Beautiful. For the viewers that don't know about the Kabir project, you know, um, very nice project which explores exactly this uh, aspect of Kabir, how it can be sung by, uh, you know, followers of the Kabir Panth, you know, the Kabir Panth, the, that sect of, of Kabir's followers in folk styles in the villages in India. And then you cross the border into Pakistan and it's sung by the descendants of the Kaval but Bacho uh, Karana in in Karachi, you know, very much in a Kavali style. Um, and and then, then and then equally you hear Kabir Cafe, Indian Ocean. Exactly. Yeah. Take it into the popular arena. Yeah, it's become popularized, it's become modernized. In Sikh tradition, Kabir is there, in Hindu traditions, in Sufi traditions. So I think that's the you know, there's a, a multiplicity of of voices and styles in Kabir, um, but Kabir is that kind of unifying thread, you know, which, which brings together so many of the um, South Asian musical traditions. Uh, which I think and why, a, do you, why do you think he's, is it something to do with the content of the poetry that makes him so accessible across different um, yeah, spaces I, and regions? Yeah, I was just pondering of that as we were listening to this, to the, to the legends that were presented uh, by Mavubi today, because um you had the the song text which was picked by um abida parveen uh this um manalago yar fakiri man this is uh even the the structure of the of the text is very much structured as a guzzle it draws more on urdu uh vocabulary so it appeals to the to the sufi uh tradition the sufi elements um and perhaps that's why certain you know, these, these types of Kabir songs are, are more popular in Pakistan. Right. And then you have um, other Kabir versions like the Bhai Santo and um, uh, the other one, I can't remember what, what the other one was, but these are 
uh, linguistically at least appealing more to the Braj kind of Central India kind of languages linguistically more Sanskrit. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I think the message, um, never mind the linguistic influences or musical styles uh, which vary. I think the message of of you know even if you look at the, um, the those two examples which I gave, both of them were talking about um, finding the the your your beloved finding the, the the divinity within you and i think that's uh, this idea of the the bhakti crossing over with sufi uh, tradition as there's a, a, a mystical or a spiritual journey to mm-hmm. find uh, that divinity and, and kabir appeals to those uh, different traditions in the sense that uh, that universal message of um, finding the divine within and, and, not and where it doesn't need to adhere to an institution or a building. Or exactly, exactly, yeah. So, um, structure. Yeah. yeah. And um, you yourself, you sing Drupad music, is that right? You're a student of Drupad. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been studying Drupad for the last uh, eight or nine years um, with uh, Pandit Udaybo Alkar in India. And um, yeah, Drupad is. You know, actually, Kabir is sung in um, in the Drupad tradition also. That's, that was going to be my question, but I didn't want to show my total ignorance of the subject. Yeah. It, it, um, it is in the Drupad tradition. Yeah, most famously, I think, for those that are aware of the Gundecha brothers, uh, the, the uh-huh. Drupad, uh, they, they have composed, I don't know how old the tradition of, of singing Kabir in the Drupad style is, mm. but they have uh, at least uh, composed several of his uh, bhajans in, as Drupad, uh, songs and presented okay. style. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not sure how much history is there is behind that. Um, but it reflects the fact that Kabiji can be sung in, in absorbed into different different, different soundscapes. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Um, but Drupad is there's lots of bhajan type texts anyway in Drupad, so there is naturally that uh, crossover there in terms of song texts and themes, you know, devotional themes and uh, yeah. And um, I wondered if you could say something a little bit about the Krishna bhajan as well. I mean, what are the sort of themes that are carried across between those two? Um, and, and what are the clear differences so that to the uninitiated, you'd know, I mean, apart from the subject matter itself, you hear the word Raj. Yeah. No, it, I, was, I was thinking actually that this, um, that song text, uh, the Krishna bhajan, uh, was uh, composed by Mebuddi's Mabu, uncle. And this is something that fascinates me in, in the sense that you have, um, you know, families of, of hereditary Muslim musicians uh, composing and yes. investing their energy in, in composing songs of a version of, you know, nature. Um, and it's true. It's like, it, I suppose it's like the Rajasthani great musicians who always, you know, they sing to Krishna, they open with a, a, a Ganesh, um, a Ganesha song. And uh, I mean, something to do with patronage, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, certainly you can imagine that his, uh, Mebubi's ancestors were perhaps employed in the courts of uh, Hindu Maharajas, you know, in, in different uh, uh, places. But um, yeah, I think um, the style of the Krishna bhajan is not drastically different from the way that the Kabir bhajans were sung. Mm. There's no, um, because again, they're devotional, it's more becomes the lyrics and the themes that are explored you know the uh, i think the lyrics within the um the krishna bhajan were about you know the gopis or radha expressing their discontent at krishna com- not coming and spending the night alone and you know that romantic playful uh expression of devotion towards krishna uh, which is often mm-hmm. interpreted you know the as krishna being um the uh, divine soul and the gopis, the, cow, the milkmaids being uh, the, sort of the human souls who are yearning to uh, mm. unite with Krishna. So even, even in the Sufi tradition, you sort of hear this love of God expressed through yearning for an absent lover, sort of that kind of metaphor. Yeah, yeah. And, and even today, like um, viewers may be familiar with Farid Ayaz, very famous Kaval uh, singer Farid Ayaz in, in Karachi, Pakistan. They actually belong to the Kowal Bacho tradition from Delhi. But at the time of partition, they moved to uh, Pakistan. And they sing Kabir in their Kowali uh, uh, performances. They sing 
Krishna bhajans also in their Kavali performances. And it's it's the it comes down to the interpretation and the, the meanings uh, invested in this text by the listener rather than what you might see on the surface or inherently uh, uh, there in the text. So um, those even those Krishna bhajans are sung in Sufi contexts and the interpretation again is the Sufi yearning to unite with his beloved. Uh, and that's what we had in the Amir Khusro text, you know, uh, the last line, line uh, was talking about Mehboob Elahi, the divine um, beloved. Um, I, I'm, I'm smiling because I, I'm, I heard Mehboob in that song and I was quietly texting here on the side asking if that was this, this tradition where the singer sometimes puts his own name in as a stamp and you could hear it. There was Dilrang was mentioned and um, I think uh, Abida Parveen, she puts her own name in quite often, I think, as well, I've heard. Um, or Kabir, the word, the name Kabir always comes up, that's yeah. for sure, within it. So I thought that that was a, what's the name for it? Ch a chop? Chop, yeah. Yeah, the, the chop is the, the stamp of the composer of the text, um, which normally comes in the last line. But yeah, just coincidentally today that Mehbubji was performing a song in which the last line had Mehbub in the in the in the line but which means it means beloved it means it? beloved yeah mehboob elahi means the, the divine beloved and krishna can be seen as a metaphor or, or uh, representing that divine beloved and the, the the people on the sufi path would see themselves as the as the gopis or the radhas who want to uh, unite with their beloved so um this amazing you know um spectrum of interpretation and, and meaning you know in these song texts um, which yeah uh, which is why you have Muslim musicians singing Hindu song texts that uh, well seemingly you know, we put these labels on but I think it's a problem with uh, ascribing uh, these kind of modern English uh, language oriented labels upon uh, uh, some of these texts and traditions indeed yeah because it, yeah I mean I you, you ask somebody to come up with their own repertoire and and it won't necessarily fit into a box unless you actually ask them specifically <laughs> I'd like you to sing this this and this it doesn't often come from the artists themselves yeah um to just reduce themselves to an individual sect or so exactly. yeah well I think that we're coming to the end of our time now and it's been really really lovely to talk this through with you is there anything else that you'd like to draw out from today's performance or say as a roundup. Yeah, no, I think it was just, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. It was a real pleasure for me to listen to my boogie again, uh, as it always is. And um, yeah, just a beautiful set, you know, of, of uh, the different kind of facets of, 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 of devotion and um, devotional music traditions in, in South Asia. I think we really got a sense of that, you know, Kabir, Amir Kutstro, and uh, even the, the text which he presented of his uh, family tradition. There was one Krishna bhajan composed by his uncle. There was one, uh, the bandish at the end was also devotional in, in its nature. It was saying, Rab ko pehechane, are nadane. So those, oh, oh, unwise ones, you know, recognize God in, in everyone, you know, whether, and it used the terms Ram and Rahman, which are again, Ram as the Hindu, uh, yeah. uh, appealing to the Hindu audience and Rahman appealing to the Muslim or Sufi audiences. So it was a, a very beautiful set of, uh, expressing devotion in, in all its different facets. Um, so very calming on a weekday lunchtime. <laughs> I'm sure my blood pressure is sort of reduced by several notches. In fact, that's how it felt on Tuesday in the Brunei gallery as people wandering in and out who just go, what a lovely calming presence he has. I also wanted to thank again, before I left, the postgraduate diploma in Asian art team because they um, sponsored this event so that we could run it completely as a fundraiser. Um, so thank you to you lot, and also to our audience for listening and for making your donations. Um, I've put the um, link here and I'll keep it on, on Facebook. And um, if you wish to send anything to the, um, to the appeal and the work that they're doing in what is still a very fraught situation in India, um, but um, unless anyone has any further questions, I wish you all a very lovely afternoon. 
And um, thank you, Kirit, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.